My name is Vahid Chitsas, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning, this afternoon. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Okay, hi guys, I'm from the UK. My name is Laura, and I am the founder and CEO of Law of Attraction Life Coaching, which is LAU, because I'm the law. <laughs> Is it is it law of attraction or law of action? I'm always confused. It's law of attraction. That's my business. But I think the thing about it is, is that, you know, there is action in it. You need to do something, don't you? You can't just expect the world to give you everything and for you to sit waiting for the world to knock on your door. It doesn't work that way. So you have to be proactive. So here's my question. Is it a correct vocabulary usage for me to say individuals want to change their lives and what we can recommend to them. Or um, I'm having a challenge with the word change. Is it a change or is it an upgrade? Because I feel like when I use the word change, a lot of people panic. Yeah. But when I use the word upgrade, they're more for it. So give us a little bit of a clarification on that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've studied neuro-linguistic programming, which is kind of what you're talking about. It's about the potency of the language that you use. And a lot of people don't kind of understand how powerful their subliminal awareness is, actually kind of thinking about their subconscious. So I like to use um, the phrase leveling up with my clients. You know, I think, well, we're leveling up. Right now, what you're doing isn't working. We're going to level up. We're going to make it better. We're going to make you bigger. You know, when you think about playing Mario Kart or something like that, you know, people get used to this ideology when they're kids about going to the next level, going to the next level. And it's about achievement. Whereas when you say change, people go, oh, I'm scared of change. Change is scary. These are the things that have been implanted in your subconscious. So it's about kind of finding a way to uh, hone your subconscious into making you want to do the thing that you want to do. And like you say, change is scary. So let's level up instead. Okay. What are some of the recommendations or suggestions you have for individuals to start that journey of leveling up? Well, you've got to be conscious. You've got to be really conscious of yourself and the language that you use. You know, some of the things that I always talk with my clients is what do you say about yourself? You know, if you're saying words from, uh, you know, a lack mindset, like I am poor, I'm unsuccessful, I can't, I'm not able to. If you're using language like this, you won't be able to because your subconscious is going to prove you right. So you've got to be really conscious about the words that you're using. So be conscious about what you're doing, what you're saying and how you're saying it, you know, and the intention behind things, you know, and also recognize that you're in charge of your thoughts. You know, the thoughts aren't things that are happening to you. You're thinking those thoughts. So if we think positive thoughts, we think thoughts that back us up to make us conscious creators, you can achieve the things that you want to do, you know, become your own cheerleader. Do that whole thing of like faking it till you make it. When you say it, you can have it and it happens. So here's my question. So is it okay to have negative thoughts or doubt? Because the way I figured it is 1% doubt equals 100% out. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think what you, that whole thing about, you know, what you believe you can achieve is really powerful. If you think that you can't achieve it, you won't achieve it. You know, your subconscious is super powerful and it doesn't want to prove you wrong. You know, it wants to prove you right. So there's a part in your brain called the reticular activation. Okay. And this is the thing that seeks out what you believe in. Okay. Is that R R R R R T? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Reticular activator, something tracking, I think it's called RAS. Okay. So, oh, it's RAS, uh, reticular activator system. That's the one, RAS. So this is like the whole thing. You buy a red car, everybody else has got red cars. You know, it's because you've activated something in your brain to seek it out because you've said, this is important information. So what you need to do is you need to control what you're thinking of as important information. So you need to set yourself up for success. And the thing about law of attraction is whether you want to go into it being woo-woo or you want to go into it being psychology, what it's doing is about editing your, you know, your uh, self-limiting beliefs. So if you believe that you can only achieve you know, $10 an hour, that's all you'll ever make for the rest of your life because you don't think you're worth any more. So if you don't think you're worth it, why would your boss think you're worth it? You know, if you don't think you're valuable or that you're worthy of love or worthy of happiness, that's what you'll receive. So you have to program your mind. You have to set yourself up with that whole fake it till you make it 
That sets your RES, your reticular activator system up to seek out all the things that will help you to achieve your goals. And that's so powerful because then the world is acting with you rather than acting against you. My challenge is, I highly appreciate, I feel like, I feel like we're, we're missing out something. If you and I can comprehend that, and I'm not saying I'm comprehending it, I'm just saying I'm, I'm becoming more aware of it, right? But let's yeah. just say the level of awareness just went one level up. Why we don't teach this in traditional schools or, or, or why don't we find a way to teach this to more people? Because just what you just covered right now could help so many single moms. Yeah. become boss ladies. Like yeah. it could help so many single dads to become powerful. It could it could help a lot of people that have gone through some type of a trauma or if they've been abused while they were growing up or they didn't have the most luxurious upbringing. It could mm -hmm. definitely help them. So I'm I'm missing something. Some shit is wrong. Why more people don't know about this? How do we do that? Well, I mean, this is my mission in life. You know, I coach people and I think a lot of life coaches coach people to keep getting them back so they can keep selling them stuff. And that's not what I do. I do a thing called life overhaul. So I'm going to completely change the way that you think to change your life forever. And um, I've seen my clients turn, you know, 180 and they don't come back. And that's in three months because we work with the way that their brain works to change the way that their brain works. But interesting, what you say about teaching is I'm actually a qualified teacher. I also teach as my, my day job, okay? So I teach my students this. So it's all kind of off curriculum. So my boss will be like, what are you teaching them? But it's okay, because <laughs> this is the mission in life. But I think what happens, if you go and have a look at um, education in private schools, okay, where it's elitism, they do teach the kids this, yeah? So in maths, they'll say to their students, they'll say, okay, you've, you own five businesses, and you sell two of those, how many businesses have you got? And the kids are going, I got, I got three businesses, that's amazing. And they're teaching them this idea that they are powerful, that they have things, okay? Now to kids that are in kind of like poorer areas, the curriculum will teach them things like, you have five apples and you give away four, how many apples do you have left? So they teach the principles of giving away, they teach a principle of poverty, of a lack of, of not having enough. And I think, and without kind of going too conspiracy theorist, I think it is intentional. I think it's because to have And this is people, happening in UK? Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think but I, 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 saw the, I saw, I saw the, the, the royalties always talk about commonwealth. So yeah. commonwealth, we're always talking about wealth. So how are they teaching that? Well, I think, I think it's, again, it teaches the language. You know, the language is important. You won't, you know, we, we won't, um, if you're somebody who comes from an elitist background, you're kind of born into wealth. I'm, I'm quite, a, I come from a very privileged background myself, you know, and I, I recognize the difference with times when I've been part of my family, where I've had the backing of my family and their wealth as a child, you know, and you think you have so much privilege and so much wealth because you just have that as your mindset. But then when you come out and you try, you know, when I was a teenager and I kind of came to live on my own at 19 and go and strive on my own and I suddenly realized I've got no money. <laughs> I'm, and you start to get in this mindset of I'm poor, I can't, I can't afford, I haven't got this, I'm not able to. Then it, it becomes self-perpetuating. And I think that a lot of people in kind of elitist culture and elitist society have been taught what money management is. They're taught how to make money. They're taught how to use language. They're taught neurolinguistic programming on like a on an unconscious level. So this is just stuff that they do, you know? Wealthy people, they don't go, oh, I can't afford that. They just buy it and they enjoy it and they, they do it. Whereas I think that if you come from a poverty and a lack mindset, you haven't been taught the unconscious awareness of how to make money and how to become in those factions, you know? And so your subconscious, everything in your subconscious is, is against you, it's working against you. And that's desperately sad because it doesn't have to be that way. That is trying to defend, protect you against all the outside things. I mean, it's kind of cool. But I think you, you touched up on it. I think it's the level of awareness. We need to recognize our own patterns. And the fascinating thing is I don't have the bio, biology background that I could make this statement very strongly, but I'm studying all different animals. And, yeah. I, and I'm coming to 
to the realization that we might be the only animals on this planet that we could think about our thoughts. We could yeah. be thinking about our thinkings, which is very, very powerful because when you look at it, we have so many different species. I mean, it's, it's, it, it can't be an accident mm -hmm. because if it was, it would have happened to other species and it would have happened to other things, but it's not. It's only us. So now I'm thinking, how powerful are we and we're not utilizing it? I think, so my theory about this is that, you know, I don't know what, what I'm not hugely religious, I'm very spiritual. So I think that there's a lot to be taken from all religions and there's a lot to be left <laughs> from all religions as well. But I think, I, so, I, so I'm, I come from the UK, um, I come from a Christian background, I was raised Christian, but in the Bible it says that God created man in his image, okay? And I think that people get worked up in this, that, that God created man and, and that we look like God. So God is this like man sitting on a cloud, you know? And, and he, they think like that. Whereas actually what I think that means in the Bible is that we have been created to be creators, you know? And in the beginning of the Bible, in, in the beginning of Genesis, it says, in the beginning there was the word and the word was good, okay? And this was the, the words that you use are so potent. So go back to the original thing that we were discussing about how language is powerful. The words you use are literally breathing things into manifestation. And I think when it talks about that we have been raised, you know, as creators, that we are in the, in the image of the creator, is because like you say, we're the only animals on this planet that are able to affect nature. We're the only people that are able to affect our environments, you know, in the ways that we do. I mean, look at global warming for crikey. You know, we're literally killing our own planet to be able to manifest our own wealth in a lot of places unnecessarily as well. But we are so powerful. We've got such powerful creation with our words. But I think the problem is with the human condition is that we are like we've been conditioned to be in our ego sense and our ego sense is so fragile that we've become kind of like, what can we do? And I think as well, what we were saying about like the power of the elite and the power of the masses is that we are, you know, the masses always feels like their power has been taken away from them, that we're waiting for our parents, our government, our world, whatever it is to change. And once that changes, we can change. So we give our power away all the time to an exterior, you know, person. And I think what's really important to recognize is actually that you're the creator, that I'm the creator in my own life, and that I am the only person that can exact change in my life. And like you say, we're the only animals that are really conscious enough to be able to have the conscious thought to be able to do that. And I think animals have got it easy, really, in a way, because they are constantly mindful. They're living in the present moment. And that's why if you need to change your energy up, go and spend time with an animal, because they've got this really pure pure resonance of being in the moment and just experiencing the now but human beings have got this beautiful ability to be able to visualize and that's why we're the creators because when you can see something in your mind you can create it so anything that your mind can see you can manifest it physically and that's what is so powerful about humans and it's a shame because we are so powerful and we're so wonderful and far too many times we don't use it for good. <laughs> so here's my question. You think the queen would agree with you of not taking the powers from the, I mean, we don't have to get political, but I'm just saying, do you think the government would agree with what you just said? Because that's the whole entire point of taking the power from the masses so they could have the power. Like, I feel like there's a, sh I don't think there's like two powers. I think it's one power and it gets shifted from yeah. whichever side that goes. So that's it. So here's my other question for you. Visualization is very, very important. And I do agree. A lot of people read the Bible for, I think Bible is one of the most best elite motivational books that has ever been written. And so other holy books have yeah. done that, if you understand that. But then to me, it's like, and this is the only thing I want to say about religion. You said take some out. Of, to me, it's like, if we are given the power of choice, then I can choose for myself. So that means it's okay for me to pick what will work for me and what it will not work. 
It's, yeah. To me, that's like the fundamental of religion. I should be given that choice. Yeah. So to me, it's like, because if it wasn't, if the higher power, God, whatever you, if he didn't want us to have that choice, then we wouldn't have been given that choice. The fact that we have that choice to pick different religion, it's, I don't know, some people get tripped up on that. I'm not like, it, it's simple, it's, co it's common sense. The, you get to choose, do you want Chinese food, steak, vegetarian, vegan? You get to choose. So why can't you choose that? So, yeah. anyway. I think so that, um, you know, one of the things about, about our society, actually, is that the, the people are kind of like left in this understanding, mainly because of the media and because of sensationalism uh, and because of tribalism that's kind of caused because of the media. You know, it's us against them all the time, whoever the us is and whoever the them are but it, it, the people are inherently bad. You know, people think people are inherently bad. They're dangerous, they're frightening and they're horrible. But actually, if you look at kind of like Buddhist ideology that actually most people are, are good, they are kind and they are just trying to live a peaceful, happy life. And if you come from that perspective, that oh, I'm a good person and I wanna live a nice, happy life and the other people are good people and they wanna live nice, happy lives. When you come from that seat, actually, everything in the light in what in the world becomes much easier because you're not fighting an us and them battle we're fighting a we battle and then things like climate change you know environmentalism crime death punishment all of these things and like you're saying having the having the uh opportunities taken away from you because of having laws and dictation to you all that takes a step back some people would say i'm a bit of an idealist but i believe in the inherent goodness of people um, and I, I think we're all born good. I yeah. don't think anybody's born bad. No. I mean, you could look at it. It's just a piece of paper that's blank. I don't know if we could call it good or bad. It's just blank. Then everybody else to put. So here's my other question. <sighs> One of the hard, hardest things in order for us to level up is our surroundings. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of individuals that want to get into business, they have that challenge that their surroundings may not allow them. Or sometimes they get this feel of guiltiness that if I elevate myself to the next level, which is true, because if you start making more money, more success, more education, more this, your friends are probably are changing. Yeah. If you're driving a nice car, nice neighborhood, nice, so your friends and surroundings might change. They feel guilty for doing that. What is your recommendation for people to eliminate, get rid of, update, and change the negative, toxic environment that are in. What are some of the steps we could take in just moving our butts out of that environment? I mean, it's tough. I think that um, it's important to kind of not overshare with negative people. So if you've got people in your life that are kind of the real naysayers, you say, oh, I've got a brilliant idea. And they go, oh, but have you thought how it could fail like this? And you think, oh, great, you know, don't talk to those people about anything you're gonna do. <laughs> So, I mean, I, I keep, um, if I'm doing something amazing, I keep it quiet. You know, tonight I've told people, my business people, but actually people in my life, I haven't really told. I haven't told my friends and things. I haven't gone, oh, guess what I'm doing? Because if I talk to maybe people who aren't on the same vibration as me, they can affect my vibration and can make me reticent to do stuff. And that can be really difficult because then you, you're kind of like, you're trying to go, you know, with the stream and somebody else is shoving you and then you, before you know it, you're going the wrong way again. So I think if you've got people in your life that are particularly negative or that are difficult to kind of get cheerful about the stuff that you're doing, stop talking to them about everything. You don't need to tell everybody everything that you're doing, you know? You can keep things private to yourself and that's okay, you know? So if you've got people like that, don't talk to them. What I've found um, a lot with my clients, when we level up and we go through this process of leveling up, they go to me, oh, but my friend doesn't want to be friends with them anymore. And I go, that's okay, honey. That's the trash taking itself out. We go, that's okay. And I think people can go, well, oh, that's really not nice. But if you're on a different vibration to somebody and you're up here and they're down here, they're resonating on a completely different level. And I always say to my clients, we make them come up to meet us. We don't go down to meet them. We never ever go down to somebody else's vibration so we can communicate with them so they can understand us. They either come up to meet us or we're not playing with them. 
because if you've got negative, you know, real negative people that are bringing you down all the time, they'll bring you down all the time and they'll bring you down and down and down. And it's okay to say to somebody, do you know what? I love you, but I'm not feeling your vibe right now and I'm gonna go do me. And there's nothing wrong with that. And if they wanna level up, they can level up. If they don't wanna level up, then that's cool. But you don't have to spend time with them. You don't have to talk to them about everything you're doing. And it doesn't make you a bad person to choose you. You know, you can't serve people from an empty cup. So you have to fill yourself up. You have to be able to have something to give to people. And I say to my clients, selfless, selfishness is selflessness. You know, if I am spent and exhausted and tired and negative because I've been giving to all the wrong people in all the different ways, I can't help other people. So, you know, by putting myself first, by choosing myself and my desires and staying on a high energy, actually I can help more people to get on a higher energy and to fulfill themselves in life. And so, you know, some people would say, oh, well, you know, I'm turning my back on these people. Well, maybe so, but maybe down the line, once you're steady in your energy and you've got something to give them back, then you can pay it forward. And then you can go and rescue the people that need rescuing, you know, back on that negative energy, you know, and bring them up to meet you. It doesn't have to I be I feel like rest. a lot of those people don't, don't want to be rescued. If they yeah, do, they I know. I mean, the way I look at it is they'll reach out and they're like, listen, I like what you're doing. Can you show me? Can you teach me? Or they constantly like your stuff on social media. They engage. Like they want to get close to you. Like they're striving to be like you or emulate you or find out where you, where is it that you're getting your resources from, you know, to do that. So if they're not interesting, they're not asking, they're not kind of, I don't want to call it hustling, but the movement is not towards you. Yeah. I agree with what you're saying. It just doesn't. It just doesn't make sense. And I like that idea that you don't go down to meet them and then they they, they love. So how would you explain that to somebody? As you were saying that, I was like, how do I put that in words that doesn't come out just being an asshole? I was like, how am I going to say that? I think sometimes you've got to be not frightened to be an asshole. You know, I I send out uh, my first email that I send to my clients before we meet. Um, I say to them, look, this this can seem quite confrontational at times because some people, when they're stuck in their pits, their pits seem really comfy. It's like, oh, I've been down here a while. It's just so cozy and warm. And they don't want to stick their head up above the parapet because they're frightened. But sometimes you need somebody to say, hey, you know, what you're doing right now isn't working. You're in pain. You're suffering and you're your problem. You know, you are your own problem, you are your own solution. And that hurts. Some people aren't ready to hear that. If you're not ready to hear that, okay, honey, come back in a year. But when people are ready to hear it and they do want to change and they can recognize that actually everything that is perpetuating in your life that makes you sad and sticks you on a crappy vibration, that doesn't come from the exterior, it comes from you. It comes from your thoughts, your beliefs, your behaviors, the things that you're perpetuating on a daily basis. And and people who are in a victim mentality, they want to blame the exterior. So like we were saying about the masses and the elite, you know, they want to wait for the government to change. They want to say, oh, it's the government's fault that I'm like this. It's my teacher's fault that I'm like this. It's my parents' fault, society's fault, whoever's fault. But they're in a victim mentality. So you can't change from there. You can't get to success from there because you're not accepting your personal responsibility. When you say everything that's happening in my life is my fault and it's my responsibility to change it, boom, stuff starts changing. And I'm not coming from a background um, of having an amazing childhood who supported and had no problems. I'm coming from the background of a woman who has seen it all, had it all, suffered it all. And I think this is why, you know, why I'm good with my clients is because there's nothing that they can say that's going to shock me. There's nothing that they're going to say that I probably haven't been through already myself. And there's nothing that they can say that I can't say, honey, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Are you going to be a victim or are you going to be victorious? I love it. I love it. Listen, you got to be responsible for 100% of things, 100% of times that happens to you. Simple as that. Now, you may not. It may not have been your fault yeah. because I'm still responsible for some of the things that happened to me that I had nothing to do with. But yeah. I'm like, I'm going to own it. I'm going to move from over here. Whose fault was it? Who did it? Doesn't all matter. It's cool. Doesn't Now, I say that, but I don't treat it like that all the time. I strive 
to treat it like that all the time. And sometimes I'm like, this, I had nothing to do with it. Like, why do I got to take reset? So sometimes I still have to catch myself. I'm like, okay, let me see what I can do with this. So I'm having a hard time, but at least I'm conscious about it. Yeah, but that's it. It's about being conscious about what's happening. You know, a lot of people are just um, reactive all the time instead of proactive. So the point of being somebody who's conscious of your thoughts, conscious of your language, conscious of everything that you're doing is about being proactive. You know, whereas a lot of people are reactive all the time. They wait for something to happen to the exterior and then this informs how they're going to feel, you know. So they're driving to work. They're, somebody looks at them. Oh, I'm in a bad mood now. Somebody cuts them up in traffic. Road rage. That's them for the rest of the day because they're not conscious of the way that they're behaving. They're not conscious of things. They are reactive from stuff that's happening in their exterior. Now, it's, it's hard. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. You know, if somebody's horrible to you, it's hard not to be like, what the hell, man? You know, and not to react. But when you become aware and conscious of the fact that you are in control of your thoughts and your emotions, and you can choose to, to, to continue to have a good day, regardless if something's bad happened to you, then, then that's okay. And I think that something that I always kind of think about is I think about what goodness could be from this moment. So if I get stuck in traffic, thinking well maybe this traffic is preventing me from being in an accident 20 minutes away you know me sitting in a doctor's appointment you know and my doctor's late and a lot of people are thinking god you know i'm wasting my time here you're late for me what are you doing and they're getting reactive you know i'm thinking well, active i'm thinking what can i do i've just gained half an hour in my day that i wasn't gonna have i can sit and read a magazine i can chill i can meditate so or listen to our live session watch our igtv or watch our IGTV, definitely. That's yeah. the best thing to do. <laughs> online, find out, get something that is, you know, encourages you to be a better person instead of being kind of reactive in that situation and getting more and more mardy and lower down in your energy, you know? Stop drawing that stuff to you. Be proactive, be who you want to be. It's like what Gandhi says. It says, be the change you want to see in the world. And that doesn't come from being reactive to the stuff that's happening on. It's being proactive about the things that you want to change, whether that's external or internal. Love it. Listen, um, how do people find you? Uh, well, you can find me online. So I've got my own website, which is www.lawofattraction.co.uk, and it's L-A-U, because I'm Laura. So it's a play on words. I know, very witty. <laughs> if you can find me on Instagram, which is Laura Attraction, or if you Google uh, Law of Attraction Life Coaching on sort of Facebook or something like that, you can definitely find me, but I'd, I'll try and leave some links with you. I, I really appreciate you taking this time this afternoon from, from your busy schedule and being with us. Um, hopefully we'll be able to do uh, more videos because some of the topics we spoke um, are very interesting to me and we should get more clarification on them and put some good more content out there. If Absolutely. there's anything you need from us, let us know. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you this evening. Same here. Stay safe. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.